Um, <laughs> okay. Um, what's to be said? The good news is that there is no no message and no teaching because what happens what apparently happens is all all there is and it's utterly and completely whole already and uh, there isn't a movement from less wholeness to more wholeness that's why there there isn't any teaching nothing can be added to what apparently happens and of course in the end nothing can be taken away um that's it there is no message, there is no teaching, there is no person, there is no separate person who could follow a teaching or who would need to follow instructions on how to do life, what's the correct way to live life, what's the right way to be, so to speak. That's basically what the person would want to know. What's the right way to be? How shall I be? What should I do? Of course, in the end, in order to become a fulfilled person. And that's the dream, basically, that I am someone who said, or that there is something in me, which there is something in here, which is me and which has an autonomous life. That's the dream, basically. And a part of that dream is the sense of unfulfillment and the need, the assumed need uh, to answer that unfulfillment. And that's basically the seeking. That's where the question comes from. How shall I be? What's the best way to be? What's the best things to do? Or what's the best things to not do? Of course, always in order to live in the right way, in order to become a fulfilled person. All of that's the dream. That's a dream. There isn't anyone. There just is no separate instance. There is no separation. There isn't anyone who has lost something. And the rest, so to speak, there's nothing to find and no one needs to find. That would just be, well, naturally not there, so to speak. There isn't anyone in the first place who has lost anything. In that sense, this is not, uh, this isn't a teaching. This is not a spiritual teaching. There is no one who needs to be, or can become aware of anything, really. There isn't anyone who still needs to find anything. All there is is what apparently happens, and it's natural and ordinary and whole and complete. It's this, it's sitting in front of a screen, it's being you, it's being me, it's thoughts, it's feelings, it's the rooms that we seem to be sitting in, it's the computers, it's all of that, so to speak, is it? There isn't anything deeper behind it, or there isn't any mystery around that or within that. It's just all there is. And there is no further question, so to speak. There's no question, and there is no answer. In that sense, I'm also not a teacher, so there isn't anyone who can learn anything from me. It's just impossible. And there wasn't anyone from whom I have learned anything <laughs> in the end, <laughs> which is sad in a way, but no, there just isn't anyone. So, <laughs> all right, that's it. So, as I said, if you want to speak, just uh, turn on your microphone yourself. It will be recorded, though, or you can write it in the chat. <clears throat> Hi, Andreas. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm fine. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, uh, this is one thing which uh, I keep on hearing from you or uh, uh, somebody else is that there is only one, there is no two. But I guess me can never grasp it, right? Uh, that's right. But in the end, I wouldn't even say that there is one. It's none, actually. But that's ungraspable, exactly. Yeah. 
because see for me it's like okay there is a father and a mother that's how a child is born so there is there is this obvious two so it's like what are we talking about when we say there is only one yeah but i have to clarify that because actually i don't i actually i don't think that there is one um there isn't even one thing which is true there isn't even one circumstance which is true so one already in that sometimes i know i say it's oneness or stuff like that oneness wholeness all of that but mm -hmm. it's actually no thing there isn't even one the experience of one creates two right right so there isn't even one okay thank you thank you that's why uh, so many uh, awareness teachings which are personal teachings end up saying there is one thing which is real i am but immediately a teaching comes out of that and the assumption that there are many two or three or many so in the end there isn't even one and when I say oneness or something, it's just, it's very superficial in the end, because there isn't such thing as oneness or wholeness. But what is, what apparently happens is undivided. That's what I maybe mean sometimes. There aren't separate parts. It's undivided, but it's not one thing either. Okay, the question in the chat. If your message is useless, then we, our activity and the whole world are useless as well. Oh, absolutely. Yes. It is quite a terrible, <laughs> it's quite a terrible revelation, <laughs> but also a liberating one. So this liberating aspect is the use of your message, <laughs> smiley. Well, uh, no, it, it just is like that. The thing is that if if, if the, that liberating aspect as well is of no use, it just is what it is. And there is, of course, a liberating aspect, but there isn't anyone who could use it. That's the whole thing with this message. What this message describes, apparently, it's an apparent description, is just already the case. It's of no use at all for anyone. But freedom, wholeness, is just the natural reality, which is sitting in front of a screen and being you and being me. But it's useless. Freedom is useless. Of course, for the person, it's a kind of a, a terrible revelation because all it knows is using things. That's the dream. I use food in order to survive. I use TV in order to be entertained. I use those talks in order to become a liberated person. I use a friend in order to have a good time. I use, so the, 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 the world of the person is full of use and, it's, and somehow it's the only possibility to approach the world, to see it as useful. Because the actual experience is, oh, this isn't it. What I experience right now isn't it. But maybe it's at least useful for me. So participating in the chat, seen from the person, isn't wholeness. It's just something that I want to do or that I need to do. But hopefully it's, I can use it. There's useful information. Hopefully it will be useful on my part, but exactly that's the dream. So yes, for the person it's a terrible revelation, but it's freedom because uselessness is the natural reality. It just is useless and it was useless and it will be. Useless, of course, in terms of this personal fulfillment thing. but nothing can be used. Everything is itself already, speaking, using a knife, going to the cinema, meeting a friend, but it's never of any use in terms of what the person would assume it as a part of becoming a fulfilled person. Because there is no person. 
Okay, a question. What apparently happening over there is different to what's happening here? So there are multiple happenings. That's what I'm having difficulty grasping. Uh, yes, of course, but it's, uh, it's again someone grasping, someone trying to make up a picture and you suddenly end up with having several happenings. One happening here, one happening over there, one happening somewhere else. Yeah, but uh, th this whole inquiry is coming from a separate standpoint, assuming they're separate happenings. But that's the thing, what happens over there, what happens over here, what happens anywhere else, just is undividedly what apparently happens. But it's impossible for the person to, to be experienced, to, for the person to bring this together, to make it clear or to make it comprehensible. It's impossible. What is, how it is, it cannot be comprehended. Not a single bit. There, there also is no approach of comprehending it at least a bit or something. No, it's completely incomprehensible sitting in front of a screen, sitting where you sit, sitting where I sit, thinking what I think, thinking what you think, thinking what all the others think or feel or are. It's incomprehensible what that is, how that is, is totally incomprehensible, but it's not needed to be comprehended. That's the thing, sitting all around the world in front of computers, listening to this message doesn't need to be comprehended. It's just itself already, automatically, for no reason. It doesn't need any understanding or anyone arriving in that. Okay, question. Nothing apparently one thinging, <laughs> one thinging, <laughs> and where there seems to be a me, apparently many thinging. Well, well, it was a bit uh, the thing with the one thing. At least, as as the moment there is one thing, you have many. They go together. One thing is two things is three is many. So the moment there is thinging going on, that's kind of a dream, one could say. Yes. That's the thing, the me is the one thing. Me is the first thing, the first self-experience, the first experience of there to be something and the rest follows automatically. So when I'm me, there's immediately something around me. So you have two. And then you have a border between me and out there, something at the border. That's three. And suddenly you have a world out of many separate things. But this first thing, the one thing, is the dream. That's the dream already. But that's where many oneness teachings come out of this experience. Hmm, actually, there's only one thing going on. The rest is projections or something. But actually, this is saying, oh, there is this no thing, not even one. Question, what do you mean by it is already? It's already whole and complete, so to speak, sitting in front of a screen, being you, being me. The, there is nothing missing, and there is no possibility to add something to it in terms of fulfillment. The person constantly assumes that there will be a day when I will be fulfilled, and that this will be more than it is now. And 
that just doesn't exist. It will never become more whole than it is now. It's chasing something which doesn't exist. And in a very funny way, it's chasing something which is not needed. That probably that's what I meant with it's, it, it is it already. <clears throat> oh, there's a lot to read. Okay. Uh, this website called R uh, from Robert Wolf is the closest message like you all describe. Okay, it's a bit I, I think I read it for myself. Okay, I read it. Okay, <clears throat> Ajata, flying in the face of logic, common sense and everyday experience says very clearly that not even an unreal illusory projected world has been created. Yes, it sticks firmly to the position that there is no creation and no causality. Yes, something can only happen or exist if there is a knower or an experiencer of it. Yes, if there is no seer of the world, the world itself is not there and never was. Yes, exactly. That's what we speak about, but not in a, I mean, the other thing, what this message doesn't do is it's not conceptualizing it. So we don't speak about a concept of there being no one and stuff like that and understanding that when there is no one, there is no world and that stuff. No, there is no one. <laughs> Yaroslav writes, you speak about ordinariness of what is. Why is not what is rather miraculous? Uh, yes, it's both, but uh, there isn't anyone recognizing it. So ordinary doesn't really fit and miraculous doesn't fit as well. Um, maybe what I mean is what we talk about as wholeness is what the person would regard as ordinary. Of course, sitting in front of a screen and being you and being me isn't in that sense ordinary at all, but seen from the person, that would be the ordinary. Well, this, well, I know this, but I'm looking for something else. I'm looking for something else than being me who I am now. And I'm looking for something else than <laughs> sitting in front of a screen and listening to this to this Andreas guy and I'm looking for my freedom so maybe that's where this ordinary comes from because what we speak about as wholeness is exactly this sitting in front of a screen and being you and me and those thoughts and those feelings and, that, and stuff like that and this room and Yes, but of course there isn't anyone recognizing this as ordinary, as much as there's no one recognizing this as mirac miraculous, it just is as it is, and in a way it's both, but for no one. Okay, question, when there is no me, is there still perspective, and what about judgment? Well, apparently, but there is no one having the experience of having a perspective. But of course, um, I'm, if it is what happens, I may have an opinion on things. I, there are judgments all the time in a way, which is functioning, you know, kind of, and it's navigating through the world, which is what apparently happens. But maybe one could say there isn't anyone really believing in one's judgment, judgments. For the persons, this would be the uh, for the person. This would be the only reality. If I think someone is an idiot in my world, this is an idiot. <laughs> only, <laughs> exclusively, <laughs> so to speak. 
and when there is no one there isn't somehow landing in those thought there isn't someone landing in the whole judgmental story making it to one's own reality so it doesn't really have any resonance or it doesn't have any the judgment doesn't have any place to reside i guess you might say exactly yes one could say so exactly it would just be what happens me liking something or not liking something or stuff like that which which never becomes real which never becomes really manifest and there is no one living in a story about knowing that i don't like that mm -hmm. the person often uh, believes to know exactly what it likes and what it doesn't like and how what is and stuff while well, exactly that doesn't really take place in that sense there are no real judgments about anything mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Hello. Hello. I, had, I, I have a question. Uh, in this um, readiness, uh, what about the attachments? Attachment? Yeah, desire, attachment, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, one could say so. On the one hand, it doesn't really matter. They are not real. And in the end, the, the idea of attachment, so to speak, belongs to only to the person. And um, this sense of presence, which remains, this sense of awareness, which uh, re remains. Oh, that, yes. Yeah. But that doesn't remain, of course. That's the dream. The sense of presence is the dream. That doesn't remain. That's the person. Liberation is the death of that. The apparent death of that. Awareness, the, 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 the experience to be aware and to be awareness is the illusion, so to speak. So after the death, uh, uh, this sense of presence, presence, awareness disappears, vanishes. So to speak, or it turns out to be non-existent, actually. It's, it's a bit more weird. Than, than it sounds in a very surprising and um, in a very surprising way it turns out that it doesn't have any substance it's not even there to vanish really but it's a surprise it's an utter surprise what actually remains it's it's everything is the same without the attachment uh, uh, for no, nobody, for... One could say so, yes. Yes. Yeah. Liking things or not liking things still may happen, but there wouldn't be this experience of attachment that the person seems to live in. Yes. And desires disappear? But what do you mean with desires? Or... I mean, food, hunger. Uh, no, no, this is a uh, natural desire. I was uh, thinking more longing for love, for... Well, in a way they drop. I mean, the, the thing is, yes, I would say they drop. I mean, it's a, it's a bit hard with desires because the thing is there is a, a functioning, there is a kind of functioning going on, but the only one that seeks for fulfillment in the answering of desires would be the person and that absolutely drops so feeling lonely would be whole and complete but feeling lonely can apparently happen <clears throat> but the person would but the person would live in the dream of I need to answer that immediately in order to become a happy person again. 
and that drops completely, for example. And the wanting to be loved, I don't know, that drops basically. <laughs> well, it's just, I mean, maybe it could come back if everyone's hating someone, but uh, that's also not really happening. Say what I mean. I mean, being surrounded by people who think that I'm an idiot, I wouldn't feel nice probably, but the, the thing that longs for love in order to become fulfilled, that's a dream. That turns out to be a dream, including the need. Thank you very much, Andreas. Thank you. Thank you. In that sense, nothing is needed. The person would always attach itself to anything and hope to find, to, to gain something in being loved, in being with people, or the other way around, in being free. I mean, some people desire freedom and no rules and living in the mountains without any, just be free so to speak, and hope that this will answer their longing. And that's, that set up drops completely. But in the other hand, we, we live in a world where we need money. So listening to these messages, uh, um, it's a, a, a feeling to not do anything. Yeah, but that's not the message. I, I know, I know, but it's not, uh, it, let's say, I don't have space to do, and I need a job, I need money, I need to, to live in this world. Oh, yeah. That's, that's what I meant, where there is some kind of functioning going on, but it just hasn't anything to do with you. That's the thing. The body will go and work if it needs money and the, the body will pick up the phone and talk to someone if that's what's needed. So it's needed. So that all of that happens by itself. It doesn't serve a person. That's the dream. The person again would hope that the, all of that serves me as me, but that's the dream. And the other thing is that the rest, so to speak, just happens by itself. I mean, everything does. That's all. Yes, that's what apparently happens. Money is needed, or at least food and stuff. Yeah, yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. The idea of the person might be, the idea of the person, what enlightenment or liberation or freedom or fulfillment is. One attractive idea is, if I am there, totally free, not needing anything. No food, no other people, no money, no car, no sunshine, whatever. If I can be, but this is a picture that's based it's a personal picture. It's based on there being someone who is separate from everything else. <laughs> That's a dream. That there is any separation. And independence. Okay, uh, question. Hi, Andreas. Is there a difference in the use of the word empty in the following statements of you? <laughs> <laughs> At the one hand, emptiness is form, meaning the identity of nothing and something. On the other hand, words are empty, meaning that words have no meaning because no one experiences a meaning. Um, spontaneously, I would say uh, there isn't a difference because emptiness is form is the same as saying words are empty. Words, empty, empty and form. It's the same. The question, uh, the theme of the me seems to be what's next. Exactly. Yes. 
it wants to move on because the next moment might be the place where fulfillment waits for me. If this isn't it, so maybe in the next moment. I don't find it now, so maybe the next moment. Maybe the next moment provides what I need. The right information, the right feeling. Maybe in the next moment I have the insight. Maybe in the next moment the me drops, the person becomes enlightened. Because this right now, so to speak, isn't it. So it always is moving towards the next. Yep, what's next? Hi, Andreas. When you are not feeling well, it's hard to not want to change it. Oh, but why is that? Like if you have a pain in the body, for example, is wanting to change it a kind of seeking? No, wanting to change it is what apparently happens. Seeking would be if there is the illusion to be a person who needs to do that. <laughs> That's, uh, I, I mean, there just isn't anyone. So this doesn't suggest that you should take on a position of not wanting things. There just isn't anyone already. The, the, the thing is, if the person, the, 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 the dreamt person is attached to it, it wa again, it wants the change. It wants to feel better in order to use it for personal fulfillment. But feeling bad and changing that by whatever is what apparently happens naturally. But the person would just seek in that to have an advantage from it. The person thinks that feeling good is really an advantage for itself. That it's closer to fulfillment when it feels good. That's the only dream. Feeling bad is whole. Wanting to change it is whole. Changing it is whole. Not feeling bad anymore is whole. Being happy is whole. Okay, uh, question. What is the difference between what is and what is happening? They are the same. What is and what's happening is the same. That's all there is. All there is is what apparently happens. Okay, question. We usually think that a thought has meaning. So the question appeared here, what is the nature of the thought that has a meaning? What is seen is that a thought is totally empty. There's nothing there, yes. And the world seen by me is created by empty thoughts, yes. In a strange way, then there is nothing there or here at all. Me is also the apparent result of empty thought. Nothing there, yes. There isn't anyone, including the one who made this inquiry. Yes, no one there. Okay, question or statement. No more stickiness of a self. Yes, exactly. Yes, it would be the me that sticks itself to everything or that attaches itself to everything and turning it into, in it, only in its reality, of course, turning it in personal things, in its dream, my feelings, my thoughts, my actions, my reactions, my presence, and so on. Yeah. The thoughts have no idea about if there's, <laughs> that there's someone attached to it or not. Nothing cares. It would only be in the dream of me that things seem to be personal. Okay, next question. Tony says that everything is energy and there is contracted energy in the form of a self. 
is that just a story? Yes, it is. Yeah, it's both. On the one hand, it's what apparently happens. On the other hand, it's totally incomprehensible. And the information about it is a story. Yeah. Yes. question. I wish it felt like a function <laughs> to lose weight. <laughs> I get on my elliptical and f I get and force myself to work out and burn calories. <laughs> no more care about my old fitness goals. Yeah. Which just is what apparently happens. But I warn you, they might come back. <laughs> Okay, um, a question. Wanting to change is whole, but you are providing information <laughs> about it as well. What you're saying is a story too. Oh yeah, of course. Oh yes, yes. Providing information about what? Um, Okay, maybe I don't really get it, but oh yes, wanting to change about providing information about what is. Well, I'm just saying that what happens, what apparently happens is whole already. And if wanting of change is what happens, that's of course whole and complete, yeah. So this message doesn't try to change anything. Oh yes, it's all a story. There is no no truth. Yeah. That's the good news. It's it's this <clears throat> which can't be found, which doesn't change anything. This doesn't attempt to change anything. <clears throat> yeah, Alex writes, what is the difference between existence and non-existence or form and emptiness? If there is no difference, the words form and emptiness would mean the same, but they are different words. So what is the difference? Why are there different words used? I have no idea because yes, there is no real difference, but in the end, they are not the same either. They just, everything just is what it is without there being a real difference. But of course, it's a question within the story, assuming that there are real words and real things which are separate from each other, which could, which could be the same or could be different. So, <clears throat> and maybe the last question, question why are there different, word, different words used? That's, that's maybe another uh, uh, thing. <clears throat> there is no use of that. I'm not using words in order to bring, to bring something across. Most people, if it, most people think that this is a teaching and I use certain words or that other people use other words in order to bring something across. But one could say the use of the words is what apparently happens, but it's not that they are really used in a way to, as an attempt to bring something across as a tool. The words, the speaking just is what apparently happens. I don't use them as a tool. There's no goal. Question, so wanting to change is whole and the seeking is the need to find some fulfillment out of it? 
instead if just enjoying whatever is happening whatever may come okay instead of just enjoying whatever is happening whatever may come okay i don't sorry i don't really get the question yes yeah well yeah well okay the first thing yes one could say so in a way you, you know the thing is you can't really separate things out you can't really know what it is but of course when there's when it's cold and the windows open you will what happens maybe to close the window but yes seen from the person all of those would be personal acts and the hope would be that when the window is closed i <laughs> i was responsible for a little bit of happiness in my personal life <laughs> so to speak you know it's a, it's a bit detailed now but that's the dream of the person to be someone who has to consciously do life and in the person's reality, everything somehow, hopefully, plays a role in my fulfilled life. Also, the small things. So, seeing from the person, even closing the window is somehow attached in its world, somehow attached to the idea that this was a part of the puzzle, that I did that. That's all. But yes, life just happens. Life is what apparently happens, including so-called bad situations to change. Of course, it happens by itself. There wouldn't be anyone to avoid that. There wouldn't be anyone who could avoid change. And there, there isn't anyone who could avoid unhappy feelings and stuff like that, if the situation is crap. But on the other hand, when there is no one, one could say there isn't the hope in or the hope in finding personal fulfillment in getting the change in that sense there is not this artificial need behind that that the person would live in which the person thinks oh, i can't live anymore if that doesn't change and stuff like that <clears throat> okay yaroslav writes Awareness or consciousness non-duality teachers give people an idealistic goal that can distract from the real life. I feel your message brings me back to real life. It's a crucial difference, even if apparently you both speak about the same non-duality. Well, yeah, that's the good news. We never spoke, we, you know, the consciousness awareness teachers and this never spoke about the same non-duality that they spoke about something personal. And yes, of course, that's what most teachings are about, to distract from what apparently happens. But on the other hand, that's exactly what the person wants. Because from the, coming from the person's experience, it's, oh, this can't be it. Sorry, it can't be getting up in the morning tired and have breakfast and go to work. I, I, I want to wake up to something higher. I want to wake up to a higher awareness or consciousness and be that. I don't want to, I don't want to live in this real world and have all the problems and which is all right. Of course, I don't say that the person should want to, but the person's hope is of course, escaping from what is into something else. And yes, the awareness teachers, so or all teachers, no matter what they teach, or all coaches, or whatever the teaching is, they say, okay, if you become like that, you, this is the way out. If you, be, if you recognize that you are awareness, then you are free from the rest. Then you don't have to care about uh, driver's license, then you don't have to care about earning money because you know you are pure awareness. Or whatever the answer is oh yes it's constantly confirming this whole teachings are constantly confirming this is not it they're constantly saying yes you are right what you want to escape from isn't it and what you look for is it and yes they are constantly confirming 
uh, duality. They are constantly confirming separation. They are constantly confirming that you are right. You have to escape from it. Yeah. And there is no, no connection to what's being said here, where we said that what happens, what apparently happens, is it already, including getting driver's tickets, having bad thoughts, <laughs> feeling bad, whatever. It's a miracle. Andreas? Yes. Um, I have a question. Uh, Jesus said something about uh, this attachment uh, regarding the parents. Yes. Until you're going to hate your mother, your father, uh, like uh, in a meaning, until you're going to see your mother, your father, like uh, the rest of the world, it means you're not going to be liberated. For yeah. me, it seems to be impossible with... Uh, Yes, I have good news. It's a story. It's a it's a story. So it's a weird suggestion. I don't understand. No, it's a weird. Well, what do you mean? It's impossible for you? It seems like yes at the moment. What is impossible? To, to be detached, to see this... Uh... Oh, there is no... Oh, detachment is another story. Detachment isn't needed. Detachment is an attachment to detachment. It's... forget it. Well, who wants that? Why? Well, knowing that everything is predetermined, uh, I wonder sometimes why is this worry? Why is this uh, for, for parents? For I mean, why still well, continue? I mean, the thing when you believe it's all predetermined, so then there shouldn't be a question actually about that. There just isn't anyone. I mean, nothing is really predetermined. There just is no person. You are not doing yourself. There isn't any anything or anyone within you who could consciously do yourself, your thoughts, your feelings, what you like, what you don't like, what you think, what you believe. All of that is what apparently happens. And none of that is right or wrong. And none of that is further away from holiness or closer to holiness. And at the same time, there's no guilt or responsibility. Maybe that's why it's uh, uh, impossible to be detached, because deep down it's some guilt, some responsibility. I mean, the whole idea of detachment is based on separation. Like, who wants to detach from what? What's the detachment from? Who is, the, who is so scared of having feelings and feeling desperate and, you know, detachment is just another, it's just another idea. It sounds attractive because it seems to offer a solution. But of course, it is a selfish way to be more happy, more relaxed for me. I know this. Yeah. Like all these attachments will disappear. I will be, I will be living life more relaxed and happy. <laughs> That's what you think, yeah. <laughs> yeah, me thinks this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, it's, I would say it's exactly that me which is the illusion. And of course, detachment remember it's a it's an artificial state and it needs constant work because there isn't anyone separate total total detachment would mean seen from the person total detachment would be total separation to cut oneself off from everything i mean who wants that
So whatever you want, but this message, so to speak, has nothing to do with detachment. It doesn't recognize even the possibility of detachment. It's a dream, it's a story. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Question, uh, no, a comment. Stone Age, with no major languages, what more was more conducive for liberation, perhaps? <laughs> well. Okay, I just okay. Um, that was statement two before. I meant instead of enjoying whatever is happening or whatever may come. Yeah, I don't really. I still really understand what you what you refer to, but maybe this message doesn't suggest that you should enjoy what happens. It doesn't suggest that you should enjoy the moment instead of thinking about the future or stuff like that. There just isn't anyone. And the seeking energy will never be answered. I know it's an attractive idea to enjoy the moment as, an, as this could be a right, the right way to be. As if there is someone who could do that, enjoy the moment instead of thinking or whatever. It's another idea. There is no suggestion at all because there is no no doing of life. There isn't anyone having an approach towards life. <laughs> okay, question. <clears throat> Can you mention what hears this message? Jim has said something else, hears it, yeah. What's your description? <laughs> I tell people nothing hears it. I think they want awareness, higher self answer. <laughs> yes, exactly. I mean, I hardly say something, but one could say apparently, I, oh no, I can say it in a very non dual correct way. So, what apparently happens is a hearing of the, <laughs> is maybe a hearing of the message, but no one hears it. Yes. Yeah, and you're right. The person would somehow always imply some other thing which is higher than me. Usually, the person usually somehow differentiates between the ego me and the pure awareness, higher self me, which is always or often referred to as what I really am, stuff like that. But in the end, there isn't anyone hearing this message. There isn't a real hearing of it at all. So yes, but what seems to be happening, which is of no meaning and stuff, is that there can be an openness and somehow a hearing of it. But it's not that something hears it. It's not a process of something hears it and because it's heard, the me drops and all that stuff. That's no. It's never really heard anyway. Maybe one could say, maybe at one point it's not unheard anymore. <laughs> but the person, the person only exists in unhearing it by trying to hear something, by trying to understand something, by trying to hear something, it's unheard. But yes, in one way or the, other, or the other, the person has the idea that liberation, what we speak about, life becoming fulfilled, what somehow has to do with me, it, even in a very subtle way or in a very unimportant way, I play a role in that. My understanding, my listening, my be, my my processing of it, my participating in it, somehow it's the assumption I still play a role in all of that. It doesn't really.
Yes, they want to survive. Yes. I mean, it's the only possibility seen from the me. It's the only possibility to somehow come from a personal perspective and somehow to include and imply a personal perspective into anything. That's all right. There's nothing wrong with that. It's, it, can't be, it, it can't be and doesn't need to be prevented from happening. That's just how it apparently is. So. Hello, Andreas. Hello. Um, I've been having these uh, um, thoughts about something, <laughs> which is this. So the me is the one that is doing the search to be liberated from itself. But that is impossible. Apparently, yes. Right. So uh, Giving up the search would be like something like surrender. Okay, I give up, you know. And uh, but but at the same time, by doing that, it seems that you fall back into the past or the past, no? Whatever was happening before, like uh, you know, daily life. If you if one gives up the search, so it's like oh, I don't want to give up the search because if I give up the search, I I will never get it. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, of course. Oh, that's why the statement, give up the search, doesn't apply. Because the yeah. person giving up, the, giving up seeking will just leave back the person with an unfulfilled feeling and the immediate need to seek again. Oh, yeah, of course. The person and seeking are, you can't separate them. It would be another hope of the person. Yeah, if I just stop seeking, then I'll be fine, of course. But that's exactly what doesn't work because you still end up being a person which is unfulfilled. So Lots. we may seek, yeah. keep on seeking. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the person is the seeker. The person only becomes someone who finds for a few seconds. With the dream of, oh, I find it. I found it. Or I lost it would be like, I lost myself. Yeah, it would be another story. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to be grateful. <laughs> Not for this, it's all right. <laughs> Actually, no, no matter what happens, when, at, at times I think, okay, I have to, if I stop thinking about uh, me thoughts, uh, maybe that helps. Uh, maybe I shouldn't think anymore. Maybe I don't, it, okay, I think everything. It doesn't matter because everything is just happening. It's like there's no way out. Yes, exactly. There is no way out. There just isn't. That's it. It's whole and complete. There is no way out. Yeah. Thanks. Knowing that isn't a way out either. There's no way out. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Andreas, hello. Hello. Just make me think, uh, see the, the hamster in each cage going round and round. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. That, that's uh, the person, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. And there, there's a, a funny picture I saw it once, uh, like a comic, and it's a hamster in the wheel thinking that it's making a career. It thinks that it goes on. Yeah. Okay, there's another comment. A fulfilled person is an oxymoron. <laughs> yes, exactly. <clears throat> um, 
All right, so that's the good news. There is no hamster and there is no wheel. All there is is what apparently happens. There is no one in it. There isn't anyone who needs to find something. There isn't anyone who needs to do life. It's just not there. Uh, life, so to speak, so-called life, is what apparently happens for no one, from no one. And it's already whole and complete, but also for no one. No one needs to see this. It's already whole and, it's whole and complete anyway. So that's it. Um, thank you very much. This is it. Tomorrow there will, there's no Zoom and on the weekend with the French translation and then Monday again. All right. Thank you very much for joining. I wish you a, a lovely day and a lovely Friday and so on. Hey. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you, Andreas. Well, have a nice day. Thank you. Andreas. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Andreas. Bye. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, Andreas. Bye. Bye. Don't go. Don't care.